Tonight, we report on the cause of a crash that killed an eight-year-old Efreda boy and how 14,000 acres of land could be switched to surface water for irrigation. What's happening in sports, Bob? Big Ben baseball snapped a four-game skid. Stay tuned to find out how and who they play next. Here's a peek at our Weather Center forecast. Hi, everyone. A pretty calm night is expected for us overnight. However, will we experience some showers this week? More details coming up soon. I'm Alan Troop, and we have all this and much more on iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Scott Colve's 10-year-old son was learning to drive from his father when their pickup left the road and went into an irrigation canal. The Grant County Sheriff's Office released additional information regarding the fatal crash near Summer Falls Dam near Cooley City on March 30th. A father and son's fishing trip turned tragic as the truck plunged into a fast-moving flow of water roughly 30 feet deep. According to the Sheriff's Office, Scott Colves was in the passenger seat and tried to stop the crash by grabbing the steering wheel. The 45-year-old Efreda man and his three sons were able to escape the pickup truck. His eight-year-old son, Corey Colves, was pulled from the water and taken to Samaritan Hospital, where he later died. Authorities have not located the 45-year-old Efreda father's body and presume he died in the water. About 14,000 acres of farmland may get water from the Columbia Basin Project as early as 2015. Reporter Cameron Probert has the story. About 14,000 acres of farmland may get water from the Columbia Basin Project as early as 2015. The Columbia Snake River Irrigators Association is working with the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation and the East Columbia Basin Irrigation District on an agreement which will allow the association to start building a pump station and other improvements. The pump will take water from the canal and provide it to a group of farmers north and east of Moses Lake. The association presented the plan to a crowd of farmers, lenders, and District 13 and District 9 state legislators Friday. The surface water is intended to replace well water from the Odessa subarea aquifer presently used for irrigation. Daryl Olson, the association's board representative, explained the move is the first step in a plan to bring water to about 75,000 acres of farmland north of I-90. Farmers and lenders are putting about $40 million into the project. For iFiber One News, this is Cameron Probert reporting. Thank you, Cameron. The replacement of sewer lines in downtown Soap Lake moved forward with a contract awarded to a Wenatchee construction company. Work on the $465,000 project is scheduled to begin replacing pipes along Main Avenue and Division Street in May. The council approved the bid and contract during their last council meeting. The sewer pipe replacement project is coupled to a project to change the downtown landscape. Mayor Raymond Gravel said both projects together will help improve Soap Lake's economy. Grant County Republicans gathered for their annual fundraiser Friday night, and here is reporter Vivian Huang with the story. Community members shared company over dinner at the Grant County Republican Party's annual Lincoln Day dinner on Friday. Okay, so in the Republican Party, Lincoln was the first president of the Republican Party. And so every year we have a Lincoln Day dinner in his honor. It's not always on Lincoln Day because there's a lot of counties that have this dinner. And we all gather together. It's our main fundraiser of the year. Tables were decorated by various Grant County businesses as a silent auction was underway. Appearances were made by several Republican candidates and hopefuls, as well as Washington State Republican Party Chairwoman Susan Hutchinson. And your votes are going to counter the votes of King County. <laughs> See, I meet a lot of people in eastern Washington that believe that their vote doesn't count because King County just cancels them out. Well, guess what, folks? I need you to cancel out King County. Former National Rifle Association President Sandra Froman also spoke at the event. For iFiber One News, this is Vivian Huang. Thank you, Vivian. 
Police are investigating two suspicious haystack fires. Quincy police spotted the first fire at about 1.45 a.m. on April 1st near the intersection of Road 7 Northwest and Road T Northwest. Grant County Fire District 3 responded to the fire and let it burn itself out. The second fire was reported at about 2.15 a.m. on April 1st in the 6700 block of Road P Northwest near Quincy. The fire was allowed to burn itself out and destroyed about 300 tons of hay. The hay lost was estimated to be worth about $76,000. Now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. We'll be right back after this.